I am training her up to become my new role model dog. We're gonna get her used to using a prong collar. You're gonna get to see how it isn't anywhere near as bad as you might think. And Puppy will be beautifully heel trained, ready to explore the world in the next hour or so. Hey guys and welcome back to Femrear Canine Training and today we're starting an incredibly exciting project with my dog Puppy. This is the dog that I was fostering, there was lots of legal cases going on around her uh, from the shelter where she was at. If you want more information on that then we can go and check out the old videos. But we are rolling in to her boot camp process where I am training her up to become my new role model dog to be able to show you guys that no matter what bad start a dog has in its life with calm consistent leadership you can absolutely have a wonderful canine companion so then the outcome of today's session is going to be tuning puppy up and getting her heel walking back to absolute perfection which will then allow us to achieve incredible levels of success with our future plans So although I've done a lot of work with puppy to heel walking, I've always used a slip lead. And in today's video is gonna be the very first session that she's ever used a prong collar. Now, the reason I'm gonna be using a prong collar is because of her breed. Yes, she is half a Tosarino, which is a Japanese fighting Mastiff. And allegedly the other half is American Pitbull Terrier with maybe Pitbull Cross. What that means is that she does have an incredibly high prey drive and will be prone to dog to dog and other dog to animal aggression. It's important that we get her out into as many different circumstances and situations as possible. And when we're out in these new situations that she's never experienced before, simply I don't know how that's gonna go. If I positively prong collar train her now so she understands what this means with basic lead pressure, with very, very minimal, if not at all, corrections then when we do go out into those spaces I'm able to communicate with her effortlessly and if that aggression starts to kick in I am able to bring it down really quickly without having to resort to extreme levels of correction we're going to get her used to it you're going to see that it isn't anywhere near as bad as you might think and actually it's not going to bother her at all and it's just going to allow us to communicate even clearer and then within the next 30 to 60 minutes she's going to be beautifully heel trained understands what this means which will allow me to keep her under control when we do start to explore the wide world together. The principle behind this tune-up drill is about simply getting her to understand that she needs to be looking up to me for guidance and direction. And if she drifts off at any point, I'm gonna be providing a minor bit of pressure. The ebb and flow of this drill will mean that it will remind her that that pressure simply means look up to me for guidance and direction, drop back in. We've got lakes, we've got some traffic, there's the geese and stuff going on. So she is gonna get distracted, which is what's gonna give me the opportunity to bring her attention back to me. But when we go out to cities, when we start meeting other dogs that she's never met before, the same principle will apply and the prong collar will give us the control that we need to keep her the perfect canine companion that she is. It distributes pressure beautifully, it imitates how dogs communicate very naturally anyway, and it's only gonna further our relationship, it certainly won't damage it. So let's go. So when we do the first turn, good. So if she doesn't follow my guidance when we make that turn, and as we've already, like I said, we've done a lot of work with slip leads, never a prong. So a heel walking is beautiful. Good. And that was a classic example. She wasn't in tune with me. I turned around, and because she wasn't focusing with me, just with a little pop pop, it reminds her to bring your attention back to me. When her attention comes back to me, lovely, good girl, yes. So she did that naturally herself that time. And as balance trainers, it's not all about punishment, it's around balance. So because she did it beautifully that time, I'm gonna pay her for doing it beautifully. However, if she doesn't pay attention, I'm gonna let her know, a little pop on the prong collar, hey, that's not acceptable, I need you to come back to me. And when you do that, then I'm gonna go back to paying you. When we take a balanced approach to dog training, we 
discourage the bad behavior by the use of corrections, which means the bad behavior will happen less. Then we use treats and rewards and positive reinforcements for the desirable behavior, and that will happen more. And over time, if you've got a dog displaying bad behavior, that bad behavior goes and goes and goes, but simultaneously the good behavior comes and comes and comes. And this happens. And before long, we're only left with the good behavior, which means that we're only left with paying and praise. And that's the essence of being a balanced trainer, because it just means you've got more tools in your toolbox. So let's go. Good. Look at this eye contact. Yes. Beautiful. And I'm going to pay her for that. Good girl. But if I make an abrupt turn and she's focusing in on me, I'm not going to correct her. That wouldn't be fair. But at the moment where she starts to get a little bit distracted, good. Look at that. So she's having to work with me. If she doesn't work with me, a little bit of pressure will come on just to bring her attention back to me. We'll try and let her drift off. We do have Joe behind the camera. So what I'm going to ask is if Joe, you can get her attention for me. Yes, good. So that was a beautiful. Yes, perfect. It does not matter what is going on around you. It does not matter. If I ask you to bring your attention back to me, you have to comply because I'm asking you to listen to me because I care about you and I love you and I need to keep you safe and I need to keep other people safe. If this was a German Shepherd, if it was another dog, she might want to go running towards it. As the breed that she is, she might want to engage in reactivity back. Beautiful. The fact that she checked in on me was wonderful. This could turn into barking, it could turn into reactivity, and if you don't have an ability to turn that off, you've lost control. So in this situation where she's distracted, I'm going to ask it of her first, it's only fair. She ignored me. Yes, good. At no point did you hear a squeal, squeak, wince in pain. It was nothing more, That's the, the, a snap is the best way to describe it. It's nothing more than saying, hey, focus come back to me you're ignoring me you're doing something wrong because I want her to be my role model dog where she's going to come with me to cases where we've got reactive German Shepherds reactive Rottweilers reactive Connie Corsos she needs to be able to remain this calm the way I'm going to help her understand how to remain calm is that when she is remaining calm good girl and displaying beautiful behavior of sitting waiting patiently quietly looking up to me for guidance and direction we're paying it when German Shepherd starts to ramp up and gets a distraction, and if she's ignoring me, good. That time, we didn't really need any. She'll start to understand. Well, if I don't listen, something bad's gonna happen. If I do listen, something good's gonna happen. And I'd rather choose the good option. That's why we're balanced. Again, I want to never have to correct her ever again, ever. And if she listens to me, then I'll only ever praise her. Let's go. Good. And I'm going to pay her for that because that's wonderful. What some people think is that this prong collar is a crutch that we use that fixes bad training and that's not the case whatsoever. A prong collar helps us capture desirable outcomes and behaviours and helps to reinforce the desirable behaviours and helps us correct the undesirable ones. And what I'm going to demonstrate now is we'll swap back to, we'll swap back to a slip lead, do that same thing and we'll find out Will she only listen to me if she's got a prong collar on? Or will she listen to me if there's a slip lead on? Then after that, we'll remove the slip lead and we'll do the same principle. So then we've changed over to a slip lead and let's see if we can get the same outcome with a slip lead that we just did with a prong collar. It's the same principle, let's go. Good girl. Good, so exactly the same principle. Wasn't engaging with me. Minor bit of pressure, just a reminder, hey, let's go. Good, yes. If you're not paying attention and engaging with me, let's go. Good, better. So again, a couple of just little pops, little tune-ups as we call it, and then bang, she's straight back into being sharp and being engaged. So now let's remove that all together. Good, yes, let's go. Good. <laughs> Good girl. It's the same principle. Now we've tuned her up. She's engaging with me. She's working with me and I don't even need my hands to achieve it. I use the prong collar to help teach the behavior. That captures the behavior. And once the behavior is captured, we can then still achieve the same results even without the tool.
So that's bringing us to the end of this first session. I'm really happy with how it went. I thought the added level of a new environment that she's not been to before, the geese, the lake would make it more distracting and she'd find it difficult, but she's taken to it like a, a duck to water, no pun intended. Really happy. I want to quickly close up with showing you what it looks like in a real situation. So obviously we're now back out towards the road and showing you what it looks like. So now she's in tune with me. It helps that it's a nice sunny day and she's a bit hot and a bit tired, but she's walking beautifully on a nice loose lead, single finger. I don't need the prong to achieve it. The prongs just help capture the behavior of what lead pressure means. So if she was to start drifting out, yes, good. That's a perfect example. A little bit of lead pressure just reminds you to go, oh, hey, yep, what was it? And she looked up to me for guidance and direction which then allowed me to bring her back into this position where she's now walking beautifully. And then, yes, good. So when I get her glance up for guidance and direction, I'm gonna pay her for it. So superb first video. Can't wait to take you on the journey of making her a perfect role model dog for my work as a canine behaviorist. If you did enjoy the video, give it a like, subscribe if you're new, because I can't wait to see you on the next episode.